17 again, whoever has the world's good sees his brother in need, shuts up his tender affections from him. How does the love of Elohim stay in him? This is kind of like what James is talking about, how we demonstrate our belief. You see your brother's hungry or thirsty or in need, and you don't do anything but say, I'll pray for you, brother, you know, type of thing. Well, what good does that do? If you have it in you at that moment to help. Now, bear in mind, though, the way to help may be to get more information, not just give them something. The assumption in James is that you know your brother, you know what they're going through, you know what's going on, okay? Now, we will get to loving your neighbors yourself. There may be an emergency situation. The brother is on the side of the road, all beat up, and you go and help them and get them to a place where they can get the help they need to get unbeat up, that's not the same as the person who's, for the 57th time in a row, is struggling to have you know, enough money at the end of the month to pay their bills. That's a whole different story. You know, or the brother that's always asking for something, while in the meantime they have an iPhone, they have cable in their house, they're smoking three packs a day, and they're thinking that they're broke and they need money from you. You see what I'm talking about? Broke people don't have iPhones if they're really broke. Poor people do, you know, people that struggle. If you're broke, you don't have cable. If you're broke, you're not smoking three packs. You're struggling to put food on the table and have a shelter to live in. That's broke. It doesn't say this in here, but just so I can tell it to all of you. Before, this is just so you know, I, this is my opinion. This is just me. This is my opinion. My understanding from the word is, and this is kind of because we're talking about it, it's not exactly where we're at here, but as far as the whole personal responsibility owning it, you really, and except for counsel and advice, you should not, in my opinion, you should not be going to the ministry or people and asking for any financial help until you've done everything you can do. Okay? It's, it's not their job to make sure you can continue to have cable and an iPhone and all these things that are not necessary. You should not be asking for help until you get to the point where you can't pay for the necessities, food, shelter, clothing. You need to do what you need. Now, call if you need counsel saying, I'm struggling with these things. I need guidance on how to fix that. Do that, please. We have a financial course we put out there for free. You know, money mastery, and you could go watch that. But we are going to be a thorn in your side, in your opinion, and not in reality. But you're not going to like when I first want to make sure, or whoever you talk to in the staff that's dealing with those kind of phone calls, you're not going to like it when they first want to make sure that you've done everything you can do. Because you're going to think, oh, you just don't want to help. No. You got it completely as opposite as you can have it. We only want to help, and giving you money may not be the help you need. That may be the worst thing we can do, because all we're going to do is enable that problem to continue. That's not love. Okay? That's not love. And so you must ask yourself that question. Go look in the mirror and say, all right, before I go and seek help, not guidance and counsel. You can always ask for that at any moment. But if you are asking for someone to pay for something, to fix something that's broken, replace something that you need, whatever, okay, make sure that you've already done everything you can do before you ask from somebody else. That's love. That's loving your neighbor. Why would you ask of your neighbor if you haven't done it yourself? Why would I, why would I want to give you and you've not done? Because if I give you, you'll never do and you'll always need. Okay? Look, this was taught to me in a very sort of indirect way when we were first trying to do some help in, in um, South Africa. No, no, excuse me, in Kenya, in Africa, okay? Some ministries there, individuals there that may have been right, may have been wrong, may have been scammers. We don't know. It's hard to know when they can. A lot of scammers reach out to ministries coming from other countries, especially places where every one of them has an orphanage. It's amazing how everybody in Africa has an orphanage. Nobody's in them. Everybody just has them. At least the ones that contact the ministry. Well, we have an orphanage and whatever. But the thing is, I ended up talking to a pilot 
that dry, flies around missionaries around Africa. And one of the things he said to me as advice from his experience personally doing this, he wasn't the ministry person, but he was the pilot for, uh, I think for the Adventists, because I happened to be introduced to him because we have a lot of Adventists in this area. And he said, here's the problem. Ministries will come in, give financial help, which was needed, but it, they become dependent now on that help. Then the ministries leave eventually and the people don't know how to feed themselves. So rather than come in and teach them how to fish, as the old saying goes, they just kept buying them fish. And eventually the ministry either just forgets about them, neglects them, and moves on to something else, or goes out of no longer a ministry or whatever. And those people are now dependent on that financial support. And so we don't want to do that to you. We don't want to enable that or become codependent with that. That's not love. We want you to be able to take care of yourself and those that you're supposed to take care of that may be under your care. 